Stop scrolling. If I'm on your timeline, it's because you are working on loving your voice. So it's time to practice. Today, we're going to play categories. Some of my students have difficulty making the leap between reading things in their target voice and creating thoughts and speaking them in their target voice. One of the ways to make that leap is by playing cognitive load games. So these are games in which we have to force the brain to think a little bit, but we're not creating full complex thoughts. So categories is a really great way to do this. So I'm going to give you 12 categories and you have to come up with one word or one phrase for each category that starts with the letter H. Pause this video between categories if you want a little bit of time to think. Okay, the first category is items in this room. So in your target voice, say an item in your room that starts with the letter H. The second category is reasons to take out a loan. Number three, words associated with winter. So in your target voice, say something that starts with the letter H that is a word associated with winter. Number four, an acronym. Number five, things you throw away. Number six, sports played indoors. Number seven, things at a football game. Number eight, leisure activities. Number nine, foreign cities. So I guess that's a city that is not the city you're in. Sorry if your city starts with H. <laughs> Number 10, colors. Number 11, things that are round. Number 12, something you're afraid of. Great job, congratulate yourself on practicing and in the comments, tell me how many you got out of 12. I'm Renee and I'm a trans voice teacher and it is Motivation Monday. So today I wanna to talk about the difference between identity-based goals and target-based goals. So a target-based goal is essentially you have a target and you wanna reach it. There's somewhere you wanna to get to and you wanna go there. So in the case of your trans voice practice, a target-based goal might be, I want a more feminine voice. However, an identity-based goal is centered around your identity. So rather than having a feminine voice, which is a target, you might become a person who practices every day. So that is an intrinsic part of your identity. Now, the thing about target-based goals is that sometimes they can be a little hard to achieve because the goalpost is moving or you're not sure when you get there. But identity-based goals are things that you can control. So you may not know if your voice is sufficiently feminine or you, know, you might get misgendered sometimes and not other times and so it's unclear when you've reached your goal, but you can definitely track if you're practicing every day or three times a day. So try to shift your mindset around practice this week. Make your goal to be a person who practices. I hope this helps. I'm a trans voice teacher, and today I wanna to answer the question that I get from a lot of my trans feminine students, which is how do I shout in a feminine way? Shouting in a masculine way tends to include more chest resonance and can be described as boomy. Hey, hey. However, to shout in a feminine way, we wanna use something called twang. So twang is a type of sound that happens when we contract the areopiglottic sphincter. So on this diagram, you can see here where the areopiglottic sphincter is. This is just another piece of vocal tissue that we can use to modify the vocal fold mass, so to create a thicker or a thinner sound. So I know that most trans feminine people are opting for a thinner sound in speech. However, when we're yelling, when we're shouting, it's just not possible to shout with a thin sound. So what you wanna do is contract the areopiglottic sphincter and use that resistance to create a bright, loud sound. Hey, hey! So how do we know if we're contracting the areopiglottic sphincter? There are a few examples of sounds that you may recognize that use that areopiglottic contraction. One of them is a country singer. Well, I left my baby. Another one is a nerd voice. Uh, I'm a nerd, this is a nerd voice. Um, or a robot voice. And then also uh, an auctioneer. I'm not actually gonna try that one. <laughs> oh, I'll take, <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do an auctioneer voice. So that is how we shout in a more feminine way. If you have questions about this, leave them in the comments. I'm a gender affirming voice teacher. And today I wanna to talk about jaw tension. So jaw tension is super common along with neck and throat tension and tongue tension. So shoulder tension, basically anything in this sort of general area 
if we're stressed at all, it's very easy to create tension. Now, when we're working on a trans voice practice, a really big part of this is raising and lowering the larynx. Now, in a yawn, we might get some jaw tension, but it's, it's less likely than when we're raising the larynx. So if you're raising your larynx, you might feel that you're engaging sympathetic muscles around that area in order to create that lift. And that can lead to like a tight, strained sound. So one thing we can do to practice relaxing that jaw is just to work on conscious relaxation in a neutral setting so that we know what it feels like to relax it when we go and do the larynx raising exercises. So I like to do a, <laughs> an exercise I call fish face. So what you're gonna do is stick your tongue all the way out and then you're just gonna relax it back into your mouth until everything is just slack. And you're just gonna relax the eyes, relax the cheeks, relax the jaw, relax everything. So it looks like this. Now the tongue is the second most active muscle in your body. Can you guess the first? Leave it in the comments. So you might see some twitching and that's okay. So what we're trying to do is keep that tongue totally relaxed so it doesn't move so much. You can put the hands on the side of the face to encourage relaxation. And you're just gonna do this for 30 seconds at a time. Then shake it out. And then you're gonna stick your tongue all the way out and start again. If this doesn't help, another thing you can do is actually stretch. So we'll do like a yawn and stretch the jaw open. And then stretch. And I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Voice neutralization. Let's talk about it. I get this question probably on a daily basis. So I, I've been racking my brain to think of a way to express my feelings about voice neutralization. And I think that I've done it. So let's talk about clothes for a second, clothes, the things we wear. I think we're all aware that clothes don't inherently have a gender. Anyone of any gender can wear any article of clothing and it has no impact on their gender identity, right? However, we have clothes that we identify as stereotypically feminine, stereotypically masculine, or read as feminine and masculine within society. So when someone is non-binary and they want to express their neutralness or their non-binary gender through clothes, they have a lot of ways they can do this. They could wear clothes that are the opposite, the opposite, quote unquote, of what is expected of them within society. If someone is expected to be feminine, then wearing masculine clothes might help them to feel more neutral or more non-binary. Or conversely, if someone is expected to present masculine, then wearing feminine clothes might be their way of expressing neutrality. They could also combine elements of masculine and feminine in extremes. So that's sometimes called gender freak. You know, like a suit jacket with a tutu would be an example of extremes of masculine and feminine combined. Or you could sort of uh, sand down the edges of clothes so things are, um, you know, not particularly masculine or feminine, so more neutral in that sense. Uh, you could think like, like a fashion sack, which is my usual <laughs> go-to. Uh, and that's another way of being neutral. And then a fifth way is dressing in a way that is wholly alien, you know, wearing things that are completely unexpected within our society. Uh, and that's another way of being neutral. So when we're talking about clothes, we can understand inherently that there are many, many ways to express neutrality. Now, think about the voice. It's kind of the same. There's no one characteristic of the voice that is inherently gendered, right? Anyone of any gender can have any voice and it has no bearing on their gender identity. However, there are certain characteristics of the voice that are perceived as masculine and feminine within our society. So if you want to express your voice in a neutral way, you have so many options available to you just like you have options available to you with your clothes. So if you're expected to be feminine, you could try masculinizing your voice and maybe that will make you feel neutral or help you express neutrality. You could also combine extremes of gendered characteristics. So maybe a low voice that is really bright, that would sound like this, 
or a high voice that is really dark, that would sound like this. You know, there's lots of ways you can express neutrality with the voice. Or you could try and sand down things so that you're kind of meeting all the characteristics in the middle. So maybe you have a middle of the road uh, pitch and resonance and vocal fold mass uh, and everything is sort of difficult to discern as either masculine or feminine. Or you could create a voice that is wholly alien. Completely outside of the standard, outside of the norm. And that's great. That's perfectly great. So when we're talking about a neutral voice, how to neutralize the voice. Keep in mind, there are so many ways. It's a gigantic playground. Go out, have fun, and find out what gives you gender euphoria. I hope this helps. A question I got on my Discord server was, how do I use my new voice around people who are used to my old voice? So this is a question I get quite a lot, and I think it stems from the expectations that we feel that our friends and family and people who know us have about interacting with us. So I often use the example of lipstick. So if you're a person who doesn't wear makeup all the time and then decide one day, I want to wear lipstick, and then you wear lipstick, you go to work, and all of your colleagues are like, what is, <laughs> whoa, you look different, you know? Um, yeah, they're all going to react because people react to things that are new and strange in our environment. And that's totally normal. It has nothing to do with whether or not your lipstick was put on correctly or if it's the right color for you. It's just that it's new. But if you wear lipstick every day after that for a month, eventually your coworkers are not going to react to the lipstick anymore because it's just part of how you present yourself. And it's exactly the same for the voice. You can expect people to react to your new voice. That's totally normal. But it, it likely doesn't have anything to do with how your voice sounds, whether it's good or bad or whatever. It just has to do with the fact that it's something new to be perceived about you. But if you continuously use your voice around people who know you, they will get used to that as well, just like they'll get used to anything else that you decide to change about yourself. And if you can, try and let people in on the work that you're doing. Like tell your parents or your friends or your colleagues, hey, I'm learning how to change my voice to make myself happier. Um, you know, maybe you can help me by telling me when I've fallen out of my old voice, or maybe it would help if you just didn't mention it while I'm going through this. Like let people know that a change is about to happen. And that can sometimes alleviate some of the stress of speaking in your new voice around people who know you. I hope this helps. When it comes to feminizing the voice, there are some parts of speech that are more challenging than others. So today I want to talk about gerunds. Gerunds are words that end in ing. So for example, walking, talking, shopping, whispering, any non-conjugated verb that ends in ing. In English, when a gerund is used in a statement, it has a very particular type of inflection. It goes high, low. So walking talking, shopping, right? High, low, high, low. So this can be a big challenge when we're feminizing the voice because that fall of the gerund naturally encourages relaxation of the larynx into a lower position, especially when you're at the start of your voice journey. When we're feminizing the voice, maintaining an elevated larynx position is the primary way that we increase the brightness of resonance. So if the larynx falls, the resonance of the voice becomes darker and potentially can be perceived as more masculine. So if you're working on feminizing your voice and you feel confident in your ability to control your larynx height, challenge yourself today by practicing gerunds. Here's a list of commonly used gerunds to get you started. Walking talking, shopping, running, going, raining, driving, doing, hoping, reading, cooking, cleaning, organizing, traveling, arriving, deciding, transitioning, the longer the word, the more challenging it's going to be. So give those a try and let me know how it goes. I hope this helps. It is Trans Day of Visibility. Yay! And on this, our Trans Day of Visibility, I wanted to talk about some TikTokers that I particularly love. So I have a soft spot in my heart for the they thems uh, because I am a they them. So I want to share with you some non-binary TikTokers that really inspire me. Uh, caveat, 
I don't actually know if all these people identify as either non-binary or trans, but these are people who use they pronouns, the they thems, the they he's, the they she's. So these are my these are my people that I really like. The first is at Marky Mode. So they are a fashion TikToker and uh, Instagrammer, and I particularly love their fashions inspired by food. I'm a big fan of breakfast, uh, anything um, fried egg inspired really does it for me. So go check out Marky Mode. The next is Nikki Palumbo. So they are a comedian, a fellow Capricorn. That's very special for me. And they recently did a deadpan month of jokes, dry January, which was excellent. So go check them out. The next person I want to talk about is King Femme. And they are a queer Jewish person of color, uh, amazing fashion icon, drag performer, uh, just all around amazing person. You definitely need to check out King Femme. The next is my good friend, Dibs, uh, who runs a fitness TikTok. They are a non-binary trans individual who make a lot of like trans-specific fitness content. I'm particularly interested in the things that they have coming out soon, like a program for people who are anticipating having top surgery soon. So it's very exciting. Go check out Dibs Fitness. Uh, the next is Ryan Ken, who is an actor, comedian, writer. And I found Ryan because they did a little TikTok pretending to be French and in Beauty and the Beast. And it's like, hello, Beast. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not an actor. I'm not going to do that. But it was just so funny. It's like a real, it really shows that like trans people make the best trans jokes, obviously. So definitely go check out Ryan Ken. Um, the next is my friend Matisse DuPont, who is an amazing TikToker, Instagrammer, educator about all things queer and all things gender. They have a bunch of cool programs coming out. Uh, they have a degree in gender studies, I think, and are just really amazing. And you need to go check out Matisse. The next person I think you should check out is Big Sissy. So that's at da, da underscore Big Sissy. And they are a drag performer from Montreal who runs an event called Afro Drag, which is so cool. And I cannot wait to go check it out when it next happens. Another person I think you should check out is Tia Nash. So that's at Tia.Nash. And they are a queer wedding photographer and uh, self-employment guru. And I really love Tia's content because they made an amazing video showing how to take selfies in a feminine way or a masculine way based on where the lighting is. And that was a total game changer for me personally. So check out Tia's content. And the last person I want to share is my friend Sabine. So at Sabine Mags, they are a cripple punk, uh, queer trans individual who does these studded canes. And I just think they're so cool. We met way, way back in the Tumblr days, back in the, the old days of the internet. And yeah, they're still doing amazing things years later. So definitely go check out Sabine. So that is my list of amazing they thems for Trans Day of Visibility. But if you have anyone you think that I should check out, please link them in the comments and I'll go give them a follow right now. Happy Trans Day of Visibility. Hey y'all, I just wanted to let you know that I am taking April off and going on a little road trip out to the Maritimes and I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm not gonna be making a whole bunch of content over the next month, but I'm going to be re-editing and remixing a few of my older TikToks and then having them posted throughout the month of April. So you will see me on your timeline, on your For You page, but I won't be around to answer comments all the time. So keep that in mind and have a great April and I will see you in May. Bye.